Well, according to my calculations, the robots won't go berserk for at least 24 hours. Oh, I forgot to carry the one. Here's your look at the new Super 7, The Simpsons Ultimates, Robot Itchy. Inspired by the Itchy and Scratchy Land episode of The Simpsons, this made-to-order 7-inch scale fully articulated Ultimates figure of Robot Itchy comes with an ample selection of accessories for loads of theme park fun. Each Ultimates figure comes packaged in a deluxe slipcase window box. Collect the first wave of The Simpsons Ultimates figures. Man, if this is happening here, I'd hate to see what's going on right now at Euro Itchy and Scratchy Land. Before we get a closer look, though, at Robotic Itchy, let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. And if you guys are interested, get not only Robot Itchy, but the rest of the first wave of the Simpsons characters. I, in fact, did find this one over on Entertainment Earth's website. I'll provide the links down below to the video description. In the meantime, though, up to the top of the ears I go, you're looking at Robot Itchy standing about seven and a quarter inches in height, or the figure is going to be about about 18 and a half. I was going to say about 19, but 19's about hair taller. Let's go with 18, 18 and a half centimeters tall. Seeing also, as we already had a look at an Ultimate Simpsons figure, Homer Simpson to be exact, let's actually carefully slide over because loose... Uh, Itchy has some loose legs we're going to talk more about in a moment. Let's slide that on over and bring in Deep Space Homer, the first figure that we had a look at in this case. And you know, actually, if you were to remove the ears from Itchy, and he's probably not going to like that very much, they are about the same size to one another. Robot Itchy and Robot Scratchy, for that matter, both debuted in the episode entitled Itchy and Scratchy Land, which debuted Season 6, Episode 4. It was always funny because I thought that Itchy and Scratchy Land would have been like Season 3, Season 4, but no, in fact, it was Season 6. Debuted also October 2nd, 1994. How many of you were around in 1994? I'm putting my hand up right now behind the camera. Anyways, though, for Itchy, Robot Itchy, the figure comes included with well, quite a lot of accessories. The problem is, though, the figure has a tough time holding many of the accessories that we're going to talk about right now. First, the figure comes included with the drum. Funny enough, as you can see, he's beating the sides, the side faces of Scratchy. I don't think there is an actual Itchy drum. Of course, we are going to be looking at Robotic Itchy or Robotic Scratchy in the upcoming review. So we'll definitely check the drums on those. But some nice coloring done here. You can see there's Scratchy's face on the one side. It's the same image, in fact, that's on the other side. Got a nice gold trim on both the sides and some nice banding of gold in the middle. This does fit over its head, although you can't put it over top of the itchy head right now because obviously the head's going to be in the way. You're going to have to remove the head first. Why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and take the body. And first, the thing we'll do is decapitate the head. You may think it's going to be a lot harder to do, especially with the fact that things like ears and hair and even like the buck teeth here on the front are things that, that could potentially break. And you wouldn't be wrong either, but you just easily pop that head off a very small ball joint. Then from there, you can go ahead and take yourself the drum, just fit it over top of the body like this. Then you can go ahead and put the head back into place. Now, the thing about it, though, here's where my big issue comes with this figure. And I may, in fact, say this a lot over this review. The figure has really loose tops of his legs. Now, you can get him straight, but I have to actually find myself balancing him a little bit. Because everything you're going to be putting on the figure means he's going to be front heavy. There's one other thing that goes wrong with this also being a front heavy figure. And I'm also going to talk about that more in a mo moment as well. The figure also comes in close. You can't beat his own drum, of course, if he doesn't have himself. What are these paddles? Drumsticks? I'm sure there's probably a more technical term for this. But the drumsticks do fit into Itchy's hands. Now, he actually, to be fair, does come with these hands. Now, I already took the time to remove those hands prior to actually starting the review. Because these hands are exactly the same to those ones. Except the fingers on these ones, let's go ahead and pick the figure up right now. You can see that the fingers are a little bit more close together. And I actually have noticed that his hand doesn't really work at all with any of the accessories. So I think they probably could have saved themselves some of the plastic and just left these hands off altogether and given us a closer grip hand instead. Anyways, you can take yourself the drumsticks, names permitting, of course, and you can slide those in place. If you have the hands tilted just the right way, the drumsticks, in fact, sit right against the bottom. What would you consider that? A finger or so? And then you can have, like, Itchy beating the drum. Now, again, the problem with this, though, is the figure is now very front heavy. And it's putting a lot of the stress on the tops of the thighs. My biggest issue, then, with this figure. 
The rest of the figure's accessories comes included with a big giant mallet. Again, more weight that's un unnecessary when it comes to displaying it. But nice looking mallet, though. I really like the look of this one. Figure also comes included with an axe, which is probably going to be my go-to, I think, when displaying the figure. The axe is very nicely colored. As you can see, some nice silver applied there. The little band of red down below at the head of the axe. It's not sharp. You can see I'm very confidently running my finger across it. And the handle, of course, a very thick-looking handle, too. Comes included also with a chainsaw. A chainsaw does look also quite good. Look very cartoon accurate, I would say. And then finally comes included with a Tommy gun. Another strong contender for something I'm going to be displaying along with the figure. But again, like all the problems with this figure rely on the issue being the loose legs. Now, the legs, this this leg is actually the loosest of the two. And even like putting the figure down, I find like he wobbles. Like you can even see right there, there's not enough tightness happening to the tops of the thighs. Now, of course, when you're putting any little bit of weight to the front of the figure, not only that, but he's also got a large head, then it's going to cause the figure to wobble, in fact, fall forward. Let's go ahead and take the drumsticks out of his hand. The other side is also as well. Let's go ahead and remove the head once again. Pop that off, and we're going to go ahead and remove the drum for right now. I'm sure we're going to come back to that. No, we're not. We're not coming back to that. One of the downsides, like I said, though, of having loose legs like this, and it's it's not the knee necessarily. The knees are still pretty good. The ankles are a little on the more looser side, but it's really the top of the thigh that I'm having the most issue with. Unfortunately, poor Itchy has taken a tumble. In fact, even me just putting him down the way I am right now, you really have to get this guy balanced. And any little thing that you add to it is going to be adding some unnecessary weight to it. So like, for example, if you take yourself the axe, you can wedge the axe inside his hand. Now, again, you're going to have to prop him back just a little bit just to ensure that the figure is not going to fall forward. The whole reasoning why I keep going on about the figure falling forward is, in fact, he has fallen forward a couple of times already and paints. You can see right on the very end of his nose has worn off or chipped off or just been damaged just by the fact the figure has fallen forward as many times as he has. That's a real shame. And really shouldn't have been the case at all. If only they could just tighten this up, I think we would be so much better off. Anyways, the figure, like I said, does have the means to hold all the accessories. But I think, honestly, like the accessories work the best with the more gripping hands. Even like the Tommy gun, for example, does fit into his hand, although it's a little harder to kind of get it wedged in there. But like, I don't really think, honestly, these hands... I don't even think we're necessary in the first place. The grip just doesn't work for anything that I can see. Even like taking things like as big as maybe like the mallet. Yeah, the mallet, I suppose, could fit in there, but it probably could fit just as well in these other hands also as well. Okay, the other thing that the figure comes included with, let's hope he doesn't fall in the process. Let's take everything off of him right now. Move his arm down for right now. The figure also comes included with a swapped out head. Now you may think to yourself, holding the two up right now, I don't see any difference between the two. It's not really until you look at it from the side that you notice that there's a spaced gap. The reasoning for that, let's just get Itchy to stand once again. And by the way, in the packaging, you probably already saw this was teased already, that the head actually is removable. And underneath, you can see there's the circuit board. This starts to spark up. And I kind of do wish that there could have been some sparks that they could have added on the inside of the helmet. But yeah, this does have the means to actually open up. So really, if you wanted to, you could have Itchy, for example, displayed completely with the head cleanly taken right off. I did think, okay, well, could they not have just included one head? And then you would have just had the means to remove the top part of, of the head if you wanted to. But unfortunately, it, it doesn't look as clean. It's never really going to look as clean. And even if you still see the, the side of the head, you see a very, very obvious line. It's a lot cleaner of a finish than this one right here. I can't quite even get the top of his dome all the way in there. Kind of have to really push it down. But it never really gives you a fully finished look. And I can obviously see why they would have given you a secondary head sculpt instead of just relying on just the one. Uh, it does result in having only still the same expression in both the cases. I think maybe having the mouth slightly a little bit more open on this one would have gone a little bit more just to look a little bit different than what we're getting right here. But to swap again the head out, I'm going to go ahead and just hold on to the joint. Don't pinch the tail, whatever you do. Just pop that off. And then we'll just go ahead and grab the other head that has the... Uh, these exposed circuits. Just pop that in place. And again, like you can either have it displayed like this. And I guess one of the benefits of having a figure like this displayed with this head sculpt is at any given point, if you decide you want to have a little bit of fun, you can just remove the head and leave that off completely. Whereas obviously this one, you're going to have to then change the head if you want to get this specific look. I love the little attentions to detail that they add in there. Like even the wires alone, really nicely colored. You got some pinks some blues some reds in there as well. A little bit of circuitry, a little bit of sparking would have gone a long way also as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do I want to leave this head back on? I know I'm eventually going to get to the articulation. By the way, there's the inside of the head, by the way. You know what? 
I think I might just change the head because I know I know myself, I know I'm going to be looking at the articulation on this figure shortly enough and I know eventually I'm just going to want to take the head off anyways. So let's just pop that off. A lot of creaking, a lot of squeaking, not the things you really want to have go along with a the figure. Then go ahead and pop this back into place. There we go. Ironically enough, though, when it comes to the articulation on the figure, I'm just going to take a detour for a second here before we look at the rest of the features. The uh, articulation on the head, the neck is actually hinged on the side rather than front or back. So you can't have it sort of looking like it's short circuiting as opposed to having the head moving up and down. You probably wouldn't be able to move the head up and down anyways too much. So th that's probably one of the reasons why they decided to have the hinge joint on the side of the neck rather than the front or the back. Anyways, though, for the rest of the detailing on the figure, though, I'm a little disappointed still that a little bit of paint chipped on the front. Again, you've got those mad eyes done nicely, very, ni very nicely in red. You got the buck teeth there on Itchy being painted nicely in a silver. Some black on the inside of the mouth gives you a little more of a darker recessed area. And again, like the colors, you've got some nice, nice additional grayish blue added there for the ears that match the colors also there for his nose. As for the rest of the body, still you have that same sort of bluish gray added there for the arms, the hands, sort of these Mickey Mouse style of hands that they have. Again, I don't understand why they had to give you these hands and then another pair of hands. These hands do find the work for, for everything, everything. You got some nice painted in rivets there done in nicely in silver. Very skinny legs though, very skinny legs, like the, like the episode. And again, you've got the, uh, the, the tail as well, which, which that, that's some really nice articulation. Really, I was not expecting this. I thought like the tail would have been just permanently posed, but yeah, you can't actually rotate the tail. Now for the articulation on this guy, here's my only issue, my only issue, and kind of question the idea that they would have gone with Robot Itchy and Scratchy for the first wave. But my issue really stems more from the idea that the looseness on the tops of the legs. Anyways, for the articulation, the head does rotate all the way around. Now, normally you would expect the head to go up and down like this. Not this time around though, Jack, you can actually hinge the head back and forth. Too far of a hinge though, you end up popping the head off the peg. So you're just gonna have to pop that back into place. The arms do rotate all the way around. You're gonna obviously hit the ears there of, of Itchy, but they do rotate all the way around. You can also hinge them all, also out as well. Uh, not quite, I wouldn't say not quite 90, just a little less than 90 in fact. The arms do rotate all the way around. There's a single hinge joint in the elbow. There's also a single hinge joint in the hands. You can also move those back and forth also, also as well. The waist does rotate. Just be careful that you're not hitting the tail along the way. This rotates, I wouldn't say all the way around. It sort of hits a point where it tells you you can't go any further, but it does rotate fairly good in fact. Again, when the legs, the legs are loose. Uh, not super loose. I mean, I can probably go in there and even fix this. But the legs just being single posts just basically means that already out of the box, these have already gotten so loose that uh, even just for him to hold the drum, anything weight further forward than him, uh, like he, he wobbles, like he wobbles too far forward, he wobbles too far back. Uh, there is, to be fair, peg holes in the undersides of his feet, but like Super 7 isn't packing any of these figures with display stands, so you really can't use, yes, you probably could use another display stand from another company, but it, to put peg holes in there seems like it's a tease that they didn't put a display stand with the figure in the first place. Anyways, the legs go forward, the legs go back. They don't hinge out. There's only just a single hinge. A knee is also are loose. <laughs> so they shouldn't be loose getting them out of the box, but there's a single hinge joint and they're loose and the feet are also loose. The things that you don't really want this figure to have for looseness are the thing, the very, the very thing that's going to keep this figure falling over. Again, when it comes to displaying this guy, I might have to just kind of lean him back just a little bit. Because I think like right now he's okay. I'm, definitely, I'm not going to display him with the drum because the drum is just way too much weight further forward. I might maybe go with some, some of the lighter accessories. Like for example, I might go with the axe, maybe have it displayed in his hand, or maybe even go with the Tommy gun. But I like the look of the figure, even though I'm still questioning why we have to get an itchy and a robot itchy and robot scratchy in a very first wave of the Simpsons Ultimates. These guys should have been left for a later wave. But my bigger issue really is, while it's a nice looking design character, painted very well also as well, plastic's pretty good on him too. I really don't have a problem. I've, well, I should say I really have a big problem when it comes to the way they've got the looseness in the legs. I mean, I could certainly see if I've had this figure on the shelf for a while, but the fact that I've only literally had this guy in the box for about an hour, maybe about two hours, uh, he should not have as much looseness as he already has. He's fine when he stands on his own, but the moment you start to stand him with any of the accessories that he comes included with is when poor Itchy, robot or otherwise, is going to take a fall. 
just sneaking a peek at Robot Scratch. The other figure I did end up picking up over on Entertainment Earth's website, and sure enough, the figure doesn't come in clue with a drum. So Itchy seems to be the only one of the two robots that does actually come in clue with a drum. They, though, funny enough, do share a lot of the accessories. I noticed inside the packaging for that that we will be looking at in the upcoming review. It does come in clue with the same axe, the mallet, and the Tommy gun. But also, Scratchy comes in clue with a couple of other things, like the tiny little robotic axe. <laughs> Definitely going to be looking forward to having a look at it in his own dedicated review. Now, the thing about this figure is, as good as it may be, it does have some problems when it comes to the legs. I'm sure I've very overly explained that over the course of this review, that he does have looseness, not only in the, in the tops of the thighs, but I've also noticed as well, as you probably already saw, some looseness starting to develop in knees. That shouldn't be the case at all. You could chalk it up to the design that they went with. You could also chalk it up to the designing of the character from the from the cartoon. Sure, it's fine to animate a character that probably has no plan to ever be released as a toy until now. But now you've got, of course, the problems on the hands of, of Super 7 to try to deliver a character that looks exactly like the cartoon while still making it a durable enough figure. It succeeds at least in one of them. It makes very cartoon-looking robot itchy. It fails, unfortunately, in one by continuing over the design of, of that character and as a resulting of it, having to give it very loose types of joints in the knees and the tops of the thighs. He stands fine for right now with an axe in his hand. I dare not even put a, the mallet in his hand. The mallet would be the heaviest of all the accessories, and poor Scratchy would already be itchy, would already be falling down a lot more than he has. And unfortunately, one casualty of the head falling forward like this, it's not this head, but the defaulted head has already had the chip paint on the front of its nose. So you want to be careful when it comes to these figures being displayed. The way that they are painted, the paint seems, at least from the few tumbles that this guy has taken, the paint seems pretty easy to come off. So you will want to be definitely careful. But what do you guys think, though, of Robot Itchy? Let me know down below in the comment section. Is this a figure that you would even venture out to pick up in the first place? Or are you maybe holding off for certain characters from these waves? Because as I did mention when we looked at Deep Space Homer, sort of questionable some of the choices that they went with. Mo is of funny enough, is the more normal of all the figures that we get from the first wave, which we will be looking at in the upcoming review. I might even just take a spaced a, a, a gap, a, a break in between the two robot uh, Itchy and Scratchy. Might look at Mo maybe next, and then we'll look at robot Scratchy. Like, like I said, give you guys a little bit of break. What do you guys think of this, this figure line so far? Let me know down below in the comment section. And once again, I already mentioned, I did find this one over at Entertainment Earth. So if you guys are interested, want to maybe get specifically Robot Itchy and Robot Scratchy, or you want to get yourself the entire wave, it should be in stock right now at Entertainment Earth's website. Provide the link down below in the video description. Certainly as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and do want to certainly stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and that you also turn on the bell notification because we will be looking at Mo and we will also be looking at Robot Scratchy. Lots of videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.